Affordable Medical Equipment is the flagship dealer for Golden Technologies, the world's leading provider of power lift recliners, mobility scooters, and power wheelchairs. If you want to try a little slice of heaven on earth, come by the store and relax in our Golden Twilight Recliner, the absolute finest recliner in the world today. If you are looking for a recliner without compromise, a recliner guaranteed to melt your aches, pains, and cares away, the Golden Twilight might be for you. Oh, it's a lift chair also. When you see Caroline sitting on the scooter by the highway, you'll know that you're in the right place. When you're driving around town, do you ever notice how many storage rental facilities there are now? And when you drive around your neighborhood, do you ever notice how many people don't park their cars in their garages? On today's episode, we're talking about all that stuff people keep stored here, there, and everywhere. Welcome to Navigating in Reverse. I'm your host, Anna Gelbman Edmonds. Today, we're going to be talking trash with two people I've known for quite a while and who are experts on the art of getting rid of stuff. But before I introduce them, I want to emphasize that I'm not implying that everything people keep in storage is trash. Some of it has monetary value, and some of it has sentimental value, and some of it actually has no value. But the owner doesn't want to admit that. So when it comes to downsizing, or if the owner passes away, what's to be done with all that stuff? To help answer that question, I've brought back to the show Kinsley Turnipseed of My Other Mother, who reviewed the book Keep the Memories, Lose the Stuff in the May issue of Reverse Magazine. Kinsley is a professional organizer and certified senior move manager. I call her the diva of decluttering. Also in the studio is Kevin Oliver of the Habitat for Humanity Restore, who represents the end zone in decluttering, which I'll let him explain in a few minutes. Kinsley and Kevin, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks. Good to be here. Well, I'm happy to have you both. I've known both of you for quite a while, so this should be a pretty fun and interesting conversation. Kinsley, we're going to start with you. Okay. Tell us why you chose to review this particular book, Uh, Keep the Memories, Lose the Stuff for Our Readers. Well, Matt Paxton is the guru of the senior move management industry. He is absolutely top-notch. He started the show Hoarders, and then he started the show The Legacy List with Matt Paxton. And this book, to me, is so conversational. It's so step-by-step. It just lays out everything in a very clear way because things are so sentimental And he gives us tips and tricks in there to think about, is it sentimental? Is it monetary value? Is it burden that I'm carrying? So it was just a fun, easy, um, and educational read. Well, the show was educational, too. I got to talk about that. That show hoarders, which they don't make anymore, right? I can imagine. But the the guys that were on the show in his position, the guys, the cleanup guys, mm-hmm. were always fun. There's a woman, too. There mm-hmm. was, I forget her name. But there was Corey and Matt and then this other woman. And they would get so angry sometimes. Remember, they would be fuming and just be so frustrated. But then there were always the psychologists yes. on the show who... I hate to, to, they were all weird. (laughs) (laughs) I thought they were. And I don't know how the Matt Paxton guys got along with us. I found all those mental health people kind of weird on that show. Was it just me? Well, no. And honestly, I probably watched three episodes of it because it causes me so much anxiety to see that because I am diagnosed OCD. So just seeing that. The mess. The mess was overwhelming. But in my educational, um, I have to take courses and classes and um, just realizing that hoarding and hoarder is an, is a diagnosis. Right. So when people call me and say, my mom's a hoarder, I think she's a hoarder. Right. That's an overused word. Yeah, yes. very much overused because it is a mental health issue, which is why they always had psychiatrists and therapists no, on site. I understood why they had them. <laughs> I just thought the ones they chose were just kind were of weird. Yeah, it was like I could not be on that show and take those people seriously. Well, what so I heard Matt Paxton speak this past year at a conference, and he was talking about the shows, and he said he really hated reality shows because the producers would say, right. we need a twist. Right. We need some drama. You right. know, can you do something to spice it up? Well, and- you could always count on Corey, the other guy. Like my, He would just get so furious. <laughs> it was hilarious. Well, anyways, I digress because we're not talking particularly about hoarding today. We're right. talking about people who 
have a lot of stuff, and for whatever reason, it's time to get rid of it. And we've already talked in a previous episode with you that stuff is a bad word, but we can't figure out a better one. Belongings, you know, whatever. So we're using the word stuff. So I don't even know where to go with this. Is there something in particular? I, you told us about the book, but y- you already knew all that stuff. Mm-hmm. What What is different in that book as opposed to what we watch on these other shows? Because there are other shows on TV that people right. watch about getting rid of things, those mm-hmm. places where you go and bid on the things in the storage yes, bins and whatever. Yes. What I like about the book is it's a very condensed resource. Anything that someone would tell you, oh, well, here's a website. Go Google this. You can go to the AARP.com. He, his whole back section of the book lists everything you would ever need. Okay. Even down to what's the best type of packing tape? Where's the best place to get these supplies? Where can you go to check the validity of charities? Where can you go for rare coins? It's all just listed there instead of me having to run here, there, and everywhere. Okay. I just open my book and say, oh, you have this type of collectible? Here's what we can do with it. Okay. So I love having that at my fingertips. Okay. Well, that's a good place to bring Kevin into the conversation because you're the kind of person who would recommend to somebody you we can take you or I can take mm-hmm. this to the restore. So Kevin, again, welcome to the program. Can you please explain what the restore is and what your role is? Because you've only been there what a year and a half, maybe almost two years. Okay, yeah. but it's very different from what it used to be. So I'm going to let you tell that story. Well, the restore itself is a retail arm of the local chapter of Habitat for Humanity. Most people are familiar with that organization. We help with affordable housing one homeowner at a time by providing the uh, initial construction, and they purchase those homes at a affordable interest rate and affordable mortgage that fits their income level. Right. The ReStore fits into this, again, as a fundraising arm of the organization. Everything that we make profit-wise goes towards the operations of the organization, goes towards building those homes, materials, overhead costs, things like that. As you can imagine, the housing construction cost has gone up exponentially the last several years, so we're even more important because our housing cost to build a home has doubled in the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. So everything that we make at the store can help to offset those initial costs for the organization. So it was very different. If you, your well, store, because I went into it before you took over the store, and I was law. I went in there to see if I could find, like, I think, a faucet sure. or something, the, and I was the like, I'm out of here. The traditional viewpoint of a restore, and I've been in a number of them across this state mm-hmm. and outside of South Carolina on my travels over the last two years, and the traditional restore looks like a warehouse. You walk in, it's got racking, it's got doors, windows, building materials, Things like that, and maybe a small section of some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we've transformed the West Columbia Restore into more of a retail merchandised space where, yes, we have building materials, we have doors, we have windows. Just sold several pallets of shingles today, for mm-hmm. example. But we also have the largest category I sell these days is used furniture. And we get quite a good bit of excellent condition used furniture in so we can get good prices for those and we have housewares we have media we have a huge book section those kind of things that people don't necessarily associate with the restore brand right. overall right so we've expanded the product offerings we've expanded what we carry and we've gone with the last two years what's selling and really again most of what i'm selling the most of is is furniture but there's other stuff in there, too. There's books and albums. There's right. housewares. We do carry a line of paint, which actually is a new product we purchase for resale. And that is still going to be 25% less or, or more than what you'd pay across the street at the big box retailers. Right. I was amazed at the difference in the store because it looks like when you first walk in, you think you're in a big lots. <laughs> Literally, it's that retail oriented. It used to be like a hardware thrift store, right. but it's not like that anymore. Kevin's done an amazing job over there. We don't even really consider ourselves a thrift store, right. although we have plenty of aspects that, that are similar to your right. average thrift store. We are a resale store and not really a thrift 
Okay. So Kinsley, when I met her, she was not familiar with Restore. Well, she she knew it as I knew it, that it was this hardware kind of stuff. Right. And so when I told her about it, she goes, oh, my gosh, I got to get down there. Have you been there yet? Yes, I've been there twice. And I think I told you when I walked in, I was shocked because right. I said it had a very retail feel. It didn't feel like you know, your Lowe's or Home Depot or, or something like that. It very much was, I was pleasantly surprised because ironically, first years of marriage, we were so poor. Right. We we went to the <laughs> restore because someone recommended that they had furniture, but it wasn't a lot. But um, there is a lot now. There is a lot now. Yeah. And that's when I walked in. It was um, aesthetically set up in a way that made sense. It that's was Kevin. easy to navigate. And it just, it was really impressive. Well, thank you. We do get some compliments. And we have been in business here in the Columbia area for, I think, overall at least 30 years, around 27-plus mm-hmm. years in several different locations. Okay. We've been in the current location about eight years. And we'll have the address and all that information in the show notes for everybody. And maybe if we have time, we'll throw it on to – we'll talk about that. So, Kinsley, you spend a lot of time downsizing, in particular, a lot of seniors as they're mm-hmm. heading into an assisted living or if there's a death in the family. You do a lot of that. So now that you know about Kevin as opposed to a thrift store or these estate sales, or do you know what he accepts? Have you had a conversation with him? Because they don't accept everything. Right. I have not had a conversation with him. Um, but I've been able to call okay. and say, hey, I have tile. Do y'all want tile? And my impression, again, of, you know, the restore was they wanted building supplies, building materials. Right. So when I would work in garages specifically, if we had PVC pipe or random faucets, door handles, mm-hmm. I said, well, Habitat will come pick up that. They'll they'll come pick up tools. But I did not know about furniture, home goods, and that type Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I would say that that... We do quite a bit of that pickup as well. We have a good relationship with a lot of the local subcontractors who bring us a lot of the building materials and Mm -hmm. things as well. But the majority of the calls I get are people like the ones that Kinsley works with who are downsizing, Mm -hmm. who have a parent or a relative who has passed away, and they're dealing with all those after effects and all of the stuff Mm -hmm. left over. And, you know, once the family comes in and says, hey, I want this or I want that, there's a dozen things left handful of, of items that may not have a whole lot of value, even right. sentimental value, but they're something that's in good condition that can be reused by someone else. And we love that kind of stuff because I can take that item, put it on my sales floor, make a couple hundred dollars off of it, and that money goes towards Habitat. So your job is to the money that comes into the store, you are self-sufficient. The st- in other words, right. it goes we towards pay the, all of our the own store expenses. and the leftover goes to goes Habitat, to Habitat exactly. for Humanity. Okay. So... Kinsley, in a previous episode, which I will also put in the show notes, you were, I think, our first guest on this Mm -hmm. podcast. You talk about how difficult it is for people to let go of their things, and you're very good at helping people do that, even if it's the children getting rid of their parents' stuff. So that's an issue we can't really get into today, Mm -hmm. but I just want to let listeners know. There's help for you out there. (laughs) Um, People like Kinsley will help you decide what's worth keeping and other ways to memorialize certain uh, sentimental things that are around the house. But what I want to get into is when you're digging through these things with people, some people think things are either valuable or, oh, somebody's surely going to want this. And you're looking at it and you're like, oh, this is disastrous, you know? (laughs) Yes. So... How do you deal with that, you know, when something's obviously either a piece of junk or maybe it's infested with something that Mm -hmm. I'm sure you see that, too? Yes. Every client is so specific and every conversation is so delicate. Family dynamics play a huge part in that conversation. Sometimes there are pieces that we really have to circle back around to three or four times. And I just sometimes... At the very initial consult, when I talk about the process, uh, family comes first, and then we do kind of a keep, toss, donate, I say, because some things are just toss, and that's okay. Right. It's We don't want it to become a burden on someone else. Right. I really, really prefer that people donate versus trying to sell. Right. I think in a lot of ways, that actually helps them let go of things is to know that, hey, there's going to be a family, there's going to be a child, there's going to be someone that can use this. And that should give you so much more joy than trying to make a few bucks off of it or trying to put it into a storage unit and pay a lot of money for items that are not 
They just sit there. They just sit there. Yeah. <laughs> Gathering dust and bugs. I yes. will add this that, and I didn't mention this yet, but Habitat is a 501c3. Mm-hmm. Right. So everything that you donate to the ReStore is a tax write-off. I know that's not as big an advantage as it used right. to be, but we do provide tax receipts that enumerate what you've donated so that you can use, give that to your tax accountant or do it yourself. Right. And that does go towards that if that's something that you do. Okay. Mm-hmm. So jumping off of what we were just talking with Kinsley about, because there's not always a Kinsley who's bringing this stuff to you. People are dropping it or asking you to come pick it up. So we need you to tell us what is and is not acceptable for right. donation? That's a long list. I know. So, I, so I'm, do your I'm, best. Well, I'll, I will say this. There's two ways we can get it. Number one, they can bring it to the store, which is on Augusta Road across from Lowe's in West Columbia. Mm-hmm. And we can also do a couple of different pickup options. I have a free pickup service, which usually is about a one to two week wait. But we can get you on the schedule within whatever whatever time frame we have and availability. We go to certain areas, certain days of the week. Right. So we kind of fit you in there. And, and that usually works for most stuff. Uh, I also have a priority pickup service run by an outside vendor that costs okay. a little bit of money. But uh, they will guarantee pickup within 48 hours. Okay. And they also will pick up everything. Whether we take it or not, they will come and get it. Oh. They give us what we will take, and they find other partners, and they have other partners who they can donate the rest to. Okay. And then anything that's not donatable, they can take to the dump. Okay. So that that option is there. Again, that does cost a little bit of money. Um, Now, what we do and don't take, I usually tell people, I said, it's easier to tell you what we don't take. Yes, I was just going to say that. So we don't take soft goods like clothing, blankets, curtains. Things like that. We don't take any kind of window treatments. We don't take blinds at all. We used to. Blinds are a liability these days. Use okay. blinds especially. So we just we just quit taking them. We don't take usually computer type equipment, electronics, older television sets. We do take the flat screens as long as they're working. Okay. And we don't take used chemicals of any kind, paint, chemicals, cleaning supplies, okay. things like that. A lot of that is due to hazmat rules and things like so that. So the original seal has to be Right. On. If it's new, okay. we'll look at it. But okay. usually anything that's been opened like that, we don't take because okay. it costs me money to get rid of it if I have to get rid of it. Well, I was thinking that people think that they can come by with certain, like, maybe – Mattresses or furniture oh, that's yes. got we don't like take termites mat- in it. You know, we so don't take mattresses. Those kinds yeah. of things. Okay, mattresses and box springs is probably my most frequent request that I turn down. Okay, we don't take mattresses or box springs. Uh, again, that's just a used item that we just yeah you know, bed bugs etc. become an issue in those cases, and it's just not something people buy used very right. much. I don't think you're allowed to sell used mattresses, are you? I'm not sure. It also costs this- money to to dispose of them, which is why people want to donate right. them so right. much. But we do sell bed frames. Like if if you have a bed, we take the bed frame, just not the mattress or box springs. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me stop there. We're going to take a break and hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll come back and wrap this up with a couple more questions. Most of us want to stay home as we age, but need assistance to do so safely. Carolina Healthcare can help. If you need support because of an injury, a cognitive impairment, or a debilitating diagnosis, Carolina Healthcare will provide a proven caregiver and a care plan tailored to your needs that includes bathing, housekeeping, medication reminders, and more. For over 35 years, Carolina Healthcare has been your award winning premier non medical in home care provider. Find out more at carolinahealthcaresc.com. Palmetto Commercial Services is an extreme cleaning company focusing on severely hoarded homes and homes identified with health and or safety risks for the occupant. If a home is too cluttered or unsanitary for a caregiver to provide proper service, PCS can help. If DSS has an open case, we can bring the home into compliance to help close the case. We help clean homes with severe pest control issues, nicotine, fire hazards, tripping hazards, and more. Call us today at 803-479-0812. Okay, 
Okay, we're back with Kinsley Turnipseed from My Other Mother. She's a professional organizer and senior move manager. And we've got Kevin Oliver from The Restore, which is an arm of Habitat for Humanity. And we're talking about stuff, just how to get rid of stuff that you no longer need. So, Kevin, I want to continue with you real quick. Can you talk to me about the actual donation process? Absolutely. Okay. We've mentioned either calling or bringing the items to the store. The first step typically is someone calls me or they go to our website at habitatcsc.org and there's an online form there they can fill out that gives us all of their information, what they want to donate, their address, so we can figure out where to put them in the schedule. The first thing we typically ask for, however, is photos of the items. Okay. We do a visual inspection using those photos just to take a look and say, is this something we want to put in our store? Is this something condition-wise that we can sell? Right. We don't take things with major stains, rips, tears, any kind of damage, structural damage, when you're talking about things like furniture, mm-hmm. uh, broken pieces, broken parts. Parts when you're talking about appliances, does it work? Does it not work? We only take working appliances. We used to have a year limitation on the appliances, but they're so hard to get these days. As long as they are in working condition, we will pretty much take anything. Okay. So that's not a less of a concern. But the uh, the way that we proceed from that point is if it's something that looks like it's something we would take, then we recontact the customer and we say, okay. You're in this zip code, so we'll be there and have room on the truck next Thursday. And we give them that option of, is this a good day for you? Great. Let's go ahead and set it up. Okay. So I got to say, you have an amazing Facebook page. I remember when you started it because it didn't have a Facebook page. There was just a Habitat for Humanity Facebook page. But when you changed the store over, you started this Facebook page. And I think, is it every day you're posting stuff that's coming in or every other day? Pretty much every day. If I'm working, working, I'm putting something up. It's awesome. Um, And you'd be surprised what's – I mean, I'm not interested in everything, but there's been times where like a hotel or the college dorms will start emptying out everything, the desks, the the chaise lounges and stuff. And I can't get down there fast enough because I'm on the other side of town. And and the visuals visuals and the photos are really what sell that. Yes. And one of the things that I came across when I first took this position was – they had some Facebook usage, but it was with the overall chapters page. Right. And really, that's a different market and a different audience. Totally. It was about and, the houses. Right. Yeah. And then the Restore itself, which has a, a, a much more focused target audience. So mm-hmm. when we put that initial, when we put the store itself's Facebook page up, it yes, it's gotten quite a bit of response. And it's fun to put up the unusual stuff. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. If I get some something stuff. either really big, really nice, or just really unusual, and I put it on the Facebook page, sometimes it'll get a thousand responses right. in a couple of days. And sometimes somebody will walk in an hour later and say, hey, I saw this on the Facebook page. I want it. Right, right. The other thing about your Facebook pages is a lot of times you're funny. The, the way you post things, you say funny. He's not particularly funny on the podcast today, but he is funny, and I like funny people. Kinsley's funny, too. So I like that. Do you still do your weekly newsletter? I really have concentrated on the Facebook page this okay. past year. I did the email newsletter initially because that was the resource they had. That was that good, was, too. That was targeting. Yeah. And we may get back into that okay. um, because that will reach some uh, an audience that's not on Facebook because right. not everybody's on Facebook. Right. Um, the other thing, too, is there's there's actually an Instagram page that I haven't really utilized as well. I need to tie those two together. Right. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, just to reach more people. Again, the the what I've started doing, and I've done, I've I've dipped my toes into things like reels and video, and done a couple of walkthroughs, uh, which is an, a different way to show the store off, right? And and has a little audio and things with it too. So there's there's different things you can even do with the Facebook posts that that switch things up and it's not just a dozen pictures a day okay well kinsley has a good facebook page too where she does these before and afters of these organizing she does where there's those are always amazing yeah and then there's it looks like um somebody came into it's like a little retail store now like somebody's coat closet right it's pretty (laughs) funny so you can go there so that's this is your all's opportunity kinsley where can people find you how can they best get in touch with you 
we have a Facebook page. It's My Other Mother 2018. We have Instagram, My Other Mother 2018. And we have a wonderful website. It's www.meetmyothermother.com. But Kevin, I thank you for pushing Facebook because I might be downsizing 70 and 80 year olds, but 40, 50 and 60 year olds are on Facebook. So right, that's right. an absolute. My 80 year old mother's on Facebook. <laughs> well, again, yeah, a lot of our older clients are on Facebook. So making it fun and interesting. I love your cell pages. I share a lot of your posts. Right. Because I don't think people realize what all can go to Habitat. Right. And it's important that we all are liking each other's pages. Yes. Because I, I would say that's, that's really important for anybody listening. Right. If, if you're following the store Facebook page, even if it's not something you're interested in, if you see something fun, you think a friend would Mm -hmm. be interested in tag Tag them in a comment, share it to them. Any of that helps us because then all of their friends see it too. Right. Real quick, before I get back to you, Kevin, Kinsley also is a good person to contact because not everything is donatable to the restore. She knows other places and ways to get rid of your stuff, which we didn't have time to get into today, but that's another podcast episode. (laughs) So, Kevin, how can people get in touch with you? Okay. The easiest way is just give us a phone call. It's 803-936-0088. You'll get a call catcher on that with my voice on it and eventually get through to somebody real on the line. Or if you don't, leave a leave us a message. We do monitor that for messages. You can also email us, and the email address is restore at habitatcsc.org. Or just go to the Habitat for Humanity Central South Carolina website, Google that, or it's the same, habitatcsc.org, and there's a form online. There's a restore tab there and a form for donations and some other information. It also has the listing of what we do and don't take on there. That's up to date as far as I can remember. And, of course, you can stop by the store, 2814 Augusta Road. West Columbia, we are right across from Lowe's in the same building as Carolina Pottery. That's right. Well, you two are delightful, (laughs) even when you're not on the podcast. Love hanging with both of you. And uh, thank you for coming in and sharing. My guess is we're going to have you both back at some point. I'll bring some jokes then. Yes. Kevin will will be funny the next time. (laughs) And I won't be. I'll just be serious for once. Okay. Thanks for coming. We will catch up with you two later. And that's our show for today. The Reverse Podcast is written and produced by the F-Suite LLC, all rights reserved. Our audio engineer is Andrew Hayworth. Thank you for listening. Hey, listeners, if you're enjoying the Navigating in Reverse podcast, you'll love Reverse Magazine. We tackle caregiving proactively, providing information and answers to questions you might not even know you need yet. Visit reversemagazine.us for more information or to subscribe.